OK, everybody, let's do this program. This is uh, in your chapter 6 lecture notes. Use a for loop to display the numbers from 1 to 20. Write a for loop that will only print out the odd numbers between 1 and 100, etc. So let's do the first one. Uh, use a for loop to display the numbers from 1 to 20. OK, so we need to display the numbers between 1 and 20. Um, I will declare a final number. Let's call it uh, end and assign it to it. OK, assign 20 to it. Um, so a for loop, we start from, we want to print from 1 to 20. So let's start from 1, right? OK, and less than, we need to include 20. So less than or equal to end, which is 20, and the plus plus. OK, let's put the curly braces there. Just get into that habit so that you won't run into compiling problems. Um, so we are printing out what? The number. Number first is 1, then it's 2, then it's 3. So i, that's the variable. And let's add a space. OK, let's run. And that's good. That is good. Um, if you want to print out just like that, then it will print it out horizontally. OK, uh, that's that one. Now let's write a loop that will only print out the odd numbers between 1 and 100. And you already know how to test uh, an odd number. That means if the number modulus 2 is 1, the remainder is 1, then it's odd. But we need numbers between 1 and 100. So let's change this 20 to 100. <clears throat> and here, <clears throat> we will test, right? Test if the number, which is i, modulus 2, is equal to odd, uh, no, to <clears throat> 1. If it is 1, then we print it out. Okay. So this does that. Okay. Let's do the next one. Write a for loop that asks the user to enter um, 10 numbers and add them together to have a total and display the total once. So now we are having user input. We need the user to enter something and we need to get that input. So I will declare a variable to store the input. And we want 10 numbers. So instead of 100, let's change that to 10. And we want to add them together to have a total, OK? So we need another variable named total. And when you have total or difference or product or uh, quotient, always initialize it to its identity element. For product, you will always initialize it to 1. For total, to 0, OK? <clears throat> So this is our for loop. This will work from 1 to 10, but you can also use the uh, normal, <laughs> or usually people do it uh, with less than. OK, so we start at 0, less than 10. And we want to um, get the user input, right? So let's give the user some instruction first before they enter the number. I'm copying, let's delete that one. No, OK. Let's delete this one and just have this system dot 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 out dot print line. OK, and we say enter 10 numbers. Enter. Uh, we don't know how many, so let's use the um, uh, con uh, the constant, <laughs> the final variable, OK? This way, um, it's always scalable. You can use this program for any number of numbers, right? OK, and we need to accumulate whatever the user enters. But first, we need to get that number from the user first. Equals to scan.nextInt. So this reads the number. And then we need to add that number to total, accumulate it. OK. Uh, number, 
right? Okay, that will do that. And then we need to display the number, the total once. So if you need to do it once, it must be done outside the loop. So the total is <clears throat> total. Okay, let's see. Under 10 numbers, I will enter 2 and 3. Okay, let's just do it. That should be 10. Uh, 92. So this works. Uh, let's count. 2, uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 10 numbers. So this code works. Okay. Let's go back and look at this. Modify the previous problem so that if the user enters 0, the loop exits. Okay. Currently, the loop condition uh, the condition to exit is i is uh, not less than 10. That means i is uh, 10 or more. That's the current condition. But we also want to have a condition that is when i is when the number is not zero, when the user enters a number and it's not zero. So that's an end um, logic number is not equal to zero. So i is less than end, and number is not equal to zero. Here, it says initialize variable. That is, you are using this number variable, but it's not initialized here. You see, it doesn't have a value. Uh, just now, we don't have that problem because we are initializing it here, right? But now we are using it without a value. So let's initialize it to a non-zero number, just to one. And let's see. Okay. Under 10 numbers, one, two, three, four, five, and zero. Okay. And you can see when we enter zero, it gets out. You uh, enter five numbers and then it stops. So that's good. That, that works well. That's one way of doing it. And if you remember, uh, we can try another way. Okay. <clears throat> Let me do it another way. And I'm going to comment this out so that you still have that code. So instead of having this compound condition here, you can have another condition. That is, we did that before. Okay, number modulus 2. Oh, no, 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 not modulus 2. If number is not equal to 0, oh, no, if number is equal to 0, okay, um, we get out, right? Okay. Uh, now, we should put this after the reading, right? Okay, let's put it after the reading. Delete it, go to the end here. Okay, so we read the number first. If it is zero, then we get out. And now we actually do not need to initialize it because we are initializing it here. Okay, let's see. Under 10 numbers, zero, we get out. Okay, let's uh, redo. And we enter a 1, a 2, 0, we get out. So that's another way to do this. And look at this condition. This is pretty new. Uh, you learned this in the lecture notes, but here we are actually using it. OK, so that's it, everybody. We are done with this uh, programming exercise.